Well, hello. Welcome to another episode of The Bitter Upper Lip. Thank you very much again for joining me. So today we're, uh, we're going to kick it off with another sour ale today. But what we're going to review today is Nothing Left to Give from Orpheus Brewing out of Atlanta, Georgia. This is a raspberry sour ale, pretty much classified as an American wild ale. Uh, as you can see, it comes in a 16 ounce can. Uh, this is a four pack and this is a limited release. So this is very much something that you need to grab if you can see it on the shelf. I don't know if you can see the bottom of the can, but it says uh, it was canned on February 28th of this year. Uh, Orpheus Bruin, just for some background, um, they've been around since 2014, and if you're in Atlanta, Georgia, they're tucked away on the north end of Piedmont Park. They're actually a little bit hard to find, um, which is kind of nice. Um, again, a little tucked away brewery, but they're uh, what I would consider to be like the brewery that really, really kicked off um, with the sour ale movement in the city. I mean, there were a couple breweries that had done some sour ales, of course, but Right out of the gate, um, the two initial releases from Orpheus were both sour ales. And to this day, they do a variety of different styles. Um, they've got some really great IPAs and great stouts, but I would say they're mostly known for their wide, diverse array of different types of sour ales. Um, they have a proprietary mother culture that they use. Um, to my knowledge, I think it's the, the culture they use in all of their sour ales, um, which obviously adds to the consistency of the brews that you get. But I have never had this beer before. Um, I've had lots of Orpheus beers in the past. Um, this one in particular, of course, features raspberries. Something to note really cool about Orpheus is that all their cans feature original artwork. Um, I think, to my knowledge, all the artists are Georgia-based. Um, this one was done by Aaliyah Smith. I will leave her name and any type of social media context in the bottom, give due credit to her for her awesome artwork. But yeah, this comes in at 5.9%. Um, so again, 16 ounce beers. So let's go ahead and get this in a glass and see what it's about. This can's been out of the fridge for about five minutes or so. Color is pretty much what I would expect it to be. And then what I do with a lot of these sour beers, I try to swirl the bottom because these are live beers. They've not been pasteurized. Try to get any of that sour culture that might have settled on the bottom, get the full package. All right, so in the glass, I don't know if the light is doing any favors here, but uh, yeah, it, it looks like a giant raspberry. Um, looks like a jewel that should be guarded by a dragon, if you know what I mean. Um, gorgeous beer. Uh, the head on it, very, very tight bubbles. There's a few big bubbles here and there, but I mean, the head is a little off-white, actually pink, so... Head matches the rest of the beer. Yeah, I mean, they stuck the landing on the appearance. This just looks like a giant berry. So let's get a whiff on it. Man, yeah. So right out of the gate, the first thing that I get is like raspberry jam. Like if you just opened a jar of like pollen or smuckers or something, that's literally what this smells like. little the a sour note coming off of it obviously from the culture and i don't know if it might be kind of uh maybe the raspberry playing with the culture and of course the malt bill it actually smells to me like my mom would make um berry muffins when i was growing up and this is actually kind of what it smells like a bit like a raspberry tart or some kind of pastry of that nature all right well I'm, I'm thoroughly enthralled. Let's go ahead and get a sip on it. Cheers. Man alive. So, right at the very front of the tongue, 
absolutely matches the aroma. It just tastes like raspberry jam in your mouth. Then you start moving to the middle and the back of tongue. You start getting some of that sourness, but it's not very overt though. Um, weird as it sounds, uh, the sourness isn't very astringent. Like this doesn't taste like a raspberry vinaigrette or anything of that nature. The tartness actually belies the tartness that you would get from like a raspberry. Like it, I guess to sum it up, it literally tastes like I'm just drinking mashed up raspberries. Like there's a very natural botanical tartness coming off of it. It doesn't, it doesn't taste like a sour ale in that regard. Um, yeah, I mean, it's like I'm drinking raspberry juice. Very, very light mouthfeel. There's a little bit little bit of body going in there. It's not like a Pilsner or anything. So I'd say a medium light mouthfeel. Little bit of a lingering finish. You start getting some of that remaining kind of bitterness and tartness from the berries. Okay, and then once the bitterness is gone, you actually start getting a little of that aftertaste of the malt bill. I get a very cereal note from it, almost like yeah, like a piece of like a croissant or a, a nice roll or something like that. Very light carbonation. It's not very bubbly in the mouth, but there's kind of enough to get a little sizzle and pop going on. I start feeling it in the back of the mouth on the sides of my tongue. Yeah, and again, like usually once that fruitiness and that tartness goes away, you actually at that point taste the, the malt characteristic a bit. So yeah, this is uh, absolutely phenomenal. Um, I would absolutely recommend this. Um, if you like fruit beers, get it. If you're someone that's trying to expand your palate on trying all different kinds of wild ales and sour ales, get it. Um, and I've been to the Orpheus Brewery a couple times. It's a great little setup there. Um, great staff. They've got a, actually a really interesting barrel aging program that they have there. Not really sure where this is distributed. Of course, you can pretty much get Orpheus beer anywhere in Georgia. Um, I'm not really sure where they go outside of the state. But um, yeah, if you see this, don't know if there's any left at this time of the year. But uh, yeah, absolutely go out of your way to try to get this. Um, I could see myself drinking this after dinner if I was pairing this with food, maybe something light, like a, if I had like a roasted pork loin with some vegetables, this might complement it well. Got some of that sweetness and tartiness to cut through some of the fat with a dish like a pork loin that's been roasted. So yeah, uh, another bang up job. Uh, glad I was able to give a good review to my uh, first Orpheus beer. So yeah, thanks again for tuning in. Um, if you have any comments about this beer, if, have you had it? Do you have any questions about Orpheus Brewing? Feel free to leave a comment in the section below. Um, and if you like what you saw, uh, leave me a like and a subscribe. So yeah, until next time, everyone, keep your mind sharp, your heart clean, and your upper lip better. We'll see you next time.